With the release of Blender 3.0, it's time to evaluate Blender and Maya to answer the question that's confused Redis users and games developers for years. Which software is generally better, Maya by Autodesk or Blender? Without wasting any more time, let's dive into our topic. But before that, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We are posting 3 videos every single week and you don't wanna miss them. First things first is pricing. Of course pricing going to be a huge factor for most beginners when it comes to choosing which 3D software to work with. Since Blender is an open source software, it's free license and also a part of the GNU, general public license. In other words, it's totally free. On the other hand, Maya by Autodesk costs about $1785 a year. Plus, if you want some additional 3D packages, you will need to pay an extra $800, which is absolutely not something that everybody can afford. So the winner of course here is Blender. Let's move now to modeling. Creating 3D models with Blender is fast as much as creating 3D models with Maya. Don't you ever do the mistake of watching a single video about a software and making your mind that it's faster than the other one. Each one of them is slower and faster, depends on the user and the perform task. For example, you need to press only one button to fill in faces or edges in Blender. But when it comes to Maya, you need to perform a series of moves to fill them. Another example is that I found Maya better when it comes to shading and creating hard edges without giving up on your smoothness. So the winner here is Blender. Blender developers are continuously improving its features and it's growing so fast. Every problem the community finds is being solved by developers quickly. Now it's time to talk about rendering. I'm going to give you the answer straight away here. Rendering in Blender is much better than Maya. Maya has a single rendering engine. It's called Arnold. This rendering engine is fast, memory efficient, supports interactive rendering, it has a physically based ray tracer, and it is scalable. Let's be honest, Arnold is so powerful, but it also has some drawbacks that makes it weaker in front of EV, which is one from Blender's rendering engines. For example, Arnold has to preload anything that you want to render. This means that your Maya window will freeze until the process finishes, and only then it will show you something. Eevee allows you to render 3D assets in real time. It gives you a visual image loading in pieces through OpenGL. That allows it to focus on speed, which makes Eevee the render engine of choice when it comes to evaluating how well your current progress matches your project's aims. Besides rendering high quality renders, Eevee allows you to render physically based rendering materials because of its real time rendering capabilities. That will also help you boost your speed when working on 3D models texturing. Arnold on the other hand doesn't support real time rendering, neither previewing your materials which makes it weaker than Eevee. In Blender's previous update, they added another rendering engine which makes the total of Blender's rendering engines 3 now. The last rendering engine, CyclesX, sounds very promising, but it of course needs a lot of testing before judging it. I actually didn't do so. I'm going to post a whole video about this rendering engine in the upcoming weeks. So as we said, the winner here is Blender's rendering engine because of the flexibility they have and the optimization to the demands of each task, including real time rendering which takes it to a whole nother level. What about animations? As a games developer, I always try to animate my 3D models, and Blender was always quite effective for me. It allowed me to animate my rigged setups however I wanted. But it's actually not the place to go for animation. Maya is. After all, film studies use Maya for so many subfilms like Toy Story and Avatar. You can see the complexity of rigs here. Maya gives users a variety of tools to control every movement, which is not available in Blender. It also includes built-in rigs to work directly with, plus if you know Maya scripting language then you will be able to do some amazing animations. So Maya here is much better for creating video games and visual effects than Blender. One from the best perks in Blender is that it allows you to draw and create 2D animations in 3D space. So if storyboarding is a part of your art, you should definitely give Blender a shot. Although Blender is catching up to Maya, Maya is still better at animating due to its variety of tools and all the in-house add-ons it has. That's why Maya is the winner here. 
who is visual effects winner. Maya and Blender each excels at simulating different kind of things. For example, Maya is better at simulating objects like lava and concrete because of its include simulation tool. Blender can simulate dust and blizzards well. Maya also includes PFOS that allows you to simulate liquids falling as dictated by gravity. Same as before, the open source nature of Blender makes it so hard to use visual effects plugins that are out there, like FumeFX, Foynex FD, and Karakatua. Giving those plugins access to Blender users threatens the plugins creator with intellectual depths since users have access to Blender's source code. So the winner here is Maya because it has the advantage to all the visual effects plugins out there. Blender's and Maya's usability. To examine the usability of a 3D software, simply open two windows of the same software once. Most of computers cannot handle more than one Maya window. However, you can open a lot more Blender windows than that once. Also, it's much comfortable to surf between Blender's modes, it's easy, fast and smooth. The winner here again is Blender due to its open source nature, which allows it to be fast, smooth and optimized for more than one single user. What about updates? It's hard to keep up with all the changes and little things that get added to Blender frequently. You might not be aware of them at all. But once you master those little things, it's going to be much easier and faster for you to finish your project. Maya is different in this case since what it offers remains stable. So the winner here is Maya since their update schedule is easier to follow. How about learning them? The good thing about Blender is that there are so many tutorials out there. Blender is a bit like Unity and Unreal Engine guides. I always find that the Unreal Engine guides are more comprehensive than the Unity ones. In Maya, I always find the same problem. There are a lot of tutorials out there, but nowhere near as many as Blender. Probably because Blender is an open source software. That makes it so difficult to solve 3D modeling issues even the simpler one such as filling holes. That's exactly why Blender is the winner here. To sum everything up. The question of choosing Blender versus Maya requires a personalized and project by project answer. Blender is great for new users. Many hobbyists use Blender and it is one from the first pieces of software they will try because it is free. It is also good because it has an easier learning curve. I sometimes feel that the frequency of updates in Blender sheds light on the motivation behind those who build it. They are trying to do everything. I don't think that any piece of software can do everything. Maya is a lot more stable and sometimes I wish that Blender would have a main update only once a year or every two years as well. So this is the end of this video everyone, I hope that it was helpful for you. If you made it till the end, I appreciate you so much. Give this video a thumbs up, comment if you have any question or feedback, subscribe and answer the notifications bell. We are posting 3 videos every single week and you don't wanna miss them and I'll see you in the next one.